Welcome back to your source for fantasy hockey news. It's the Thursday edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. I am joined, as always, by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steel Roden. It's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone. We are here for a discussion on players that are going to be fading in the second half. This is time for you to sell high on these guys, guys that have started started heart hot and are going to cool off big time in the second half, Steel. We got big time bets and all the fantasy news that you need in between. Let's get right to it. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to your source for fantasy hockey news. It's a Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Flip and Steel here with you for the Thursday edition. We're breaking down second half fade targets, players that have started really hot. I'm going to spit this out, Steel, but that are going to cool off in the second half. It's a good time to maybe take a look at selling these guys, sell high on some of these hot starts. I don't know about you, Steele, but some of these players that I'm looking at today, of course, we're going to get to big-time bets. We're going to chat hockey. But we got to look at some of these players that have played a little bit out of their head so far that I see a big-time second-half regression. These are the players that you want to fade before they fade. I have five. I have some honorable mentions, Steele. I got Demon. I got forwards. And I got a goalie. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day, my friends. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, where the game starts, where today's episode is going to start. I'm flipping it over to you, Steele. No pun intended. Who are some (laughs) of these guys that – sorry, I had to do it. Who are some (laughs) of these guys that you are looking at that might – be a good time to sell now while they still hold a hot value ticket that might be going cold in the second half of the season yeah and i'll start off with a guy who who started the season with his new club and really hot streak dominique kubalik of the detroit red wings a guy that you and i talked about a little bit frequently where one of those players who just really needed a fresh start a new franchise to work Mm -hmm. within and and grow and develop as a player 28 points in 35 games so far this season, which is still pretty good for Kubalik. But again, he started really yep. hot this year with the Red Wings. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's going to finish the year with career uh, career highs in majority of his statistics. Nonetheless, his current career high was 46 points in his rookie season. Again, he's at 28 points right now yeah. on the season. He's only had three points in his last 10 games. He's been cold for the last two weeks. Again, he was a part of that deal where I traded Kubalik and William Carlson for Brent right. Burns. So I traded him at the right time, right sure. in the mid, you know beginning middle of when he was going cold on this streak. And again, you know, I still see that he's going to have career stats this year, career a career year by mm-hmm. the end of the regular season. Nonetheless, the Detroit Red Wings have looked a little bit shaky of recently. Kubalik has made has fallen down the uh the lineup. He's on the third line right now. So True. again, his slow production of recently has kind of put him in a little bit of a tough spot on the Red Wings lineup. A little bit of a side note with the uh, Detroit Red Wings as well. Jakob Brana has cleared waivers, so he is still remaining with the AHL uh, yep. in the AHL as he does a uh, conditioning stints. And another side note, Robbie Fabry for the Detroit Red Wings is back in the lineup. He had 30 points in 51 games last year. He's starting on the fourth line, so that could be another piece that you could look for off the waiver wire. Shout out to Robbie Fabry, good Guelph Storm alumni, nasty junior career, hasn't really been able to get it done consistently at the NHL level because of some of those injuries, Steel. He's going to get a good look here down the stretch with Detroit. Thank you for mentioning Kubalik. He was right there at the edge of my honorable mentions. If he could maybe pick it back up, go on a mini three, four game heater, I say sell right away because I think he may have already peaked a little early this season. Definitely a good sell now target to fade in the second half. Good start now, Steel. Holy crow. There's a lot of options I could go with here. But I got three D-men on my list. And right at the top of them, there ain't no way Josh Morrissey is going to continue to have the season that he has had. And hats off to him. Hats off to the Winnipeg Jets. But for me, this if this is a guy that, let's say, you have a little bit of excess on your blue line, Josh Morrissey is the perfect time to address another need in your lineup. Maybe you need a winger. Maybe you need a goalie. 
Josh Morrissey, seven goals, 36 assists, second in D scoring behind another guy who might make this list. <laughs> Josh Morrissey, though, Steele, I think you and I can both agree. Amazing first half. Yeah. There's no way he maintains this. And I'm a little bit worried about the Winnipeg Jets overall. And that's why Josh Morrissey, definitely a sell high target for me, one to fade in the second half. I think there is definitely a little bit of regression in the second half of the season for Morrissey. I, obviously, he's not going to keep up the pace that first half because that was well, ridiculous crazy. Yeah. what he was able to do. But I do really like the Winnipeg Jets. I think right there with the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are the legitimate threats of Canadian teams mm. to make a deep Stanley yeah. Cup playoff run. They're getting Ehlers back very, very soon. I think actually by the end of the week. Uh, Hellebuck's got to get it so done. It's got to be through Hellebuck, Hellebuck. It has to go through Hellebuck, Blake Wheeler, you know, maybe two weeks away as well. So I really do like this Winnipeg Jets team, but I think you're right. We can see a little bit, tiny bit of regression from Josh Morrissey. I'm going to go to a defenseman in the Atlantic division, Brandon Montour of the Florida yes, Panthers. 100%. Roster is 86%. Look, I talked yes in yesterday's episode about Aaron Ekblad being one of those resurgent players, a guy that really needs to step up and you can depend on yep. in the second half of the season. And because of that, that's why I'm talking about Brandon Montour right now. Yeah, career best 37 points last year. He's clearly going to pass that this season. He's already at 30 points in 37 games. That's obvious right there. He's had six points in his last 13 games. You know, it's still good, but it's not what he was doing at the very beginning of the season. He's also playing eight more minutes this year than last year. That's a ton more minutes. That's obviously went up because of the Ekblad injury at the beginning of the season. And yet again, with Ekblad being one of the, you know, the top defensemen on their team, he really needs to step up his game. I can see a little bit of more minutes going towards him. Montour and Ekblad are actually both on the top power play unit. I'm mm -hmm. not sure why they have two right-handed shots at the top there. Uh, you know, nonetheless, it's working out for the Florida Panthers. I'd like to see Gustav Forsing there, a left shot defenseman, if they're going to run two defensemen anyways. Nonetheless, I think Brandon Montour has really over exceeded those expectations this season. We can see a little bit of a regression for the Florida Panthers for Montour on the Florida Panthers. That's the term for all of the players that I overachieving so far. And yeah. you just can't see it staying consistent. Not to beat the Morrissey horse dead here. Previous <laughs> high, 37 points, 21 points, 31 points. This guy is not going to maintain at this clip. Not offensively. Maybe the Jets don't fall off, but Morrissey fade him. Sell him while you can. Chandler Stevenson. Very good season so far. Very good season so far, but 39 points steal. Maybe a benefit of playing with some really good players yeah. in that top six in Vegas. Last year, 64 points. Okay, stepping out season, maybe. This is a guy, if you want to get a little value again, kind of vice versa, uh, the opposite way of what I just said. If you need to fill a D-hole, trade Chandler Stevenson right now. You're going to get a decent return. His value is sky high, and he will not continue to put up points like he has couple of big games four points three points other than that just an average season he is right there at the top of my second half fade list deal for sure Chandler Stevenson if you can jump ship on him now I see a big time regression coming from this player who is averaging speaking of minutes almost five more minutes than his career average that will catch up with the player who hasn't done that before and it's yeah. only a matter of time before it happens to Stevenson I like the fact you bring him up right now because that's exactly why I have third on my list as Ooh. well. Chandler Stevenson, rostered at 76 and 82% on Thank ESPN you. and Yahoo Leagues right now. And like you said, he had a massive season last year, 64 points yeah. in 70, 79 games. Uh, I don't think a lot of people expected that type of year from a guy like Chandler Stevenson. Nonetheless, he did produce that. Currently 39 points in 40, uh, in 40 games. Right and as of right now, he's currently centering that top line between Michael Amadio and uh, and Mark Stone. Uh, yeah. As of right now, the thing about Chandler Stevenson though that is a great thing that you know could be a, a bargaining chip if you do trade him. He's a he's a triple threat eligibility center, yeah. left wing, and Glad right wing again. It. That you know Jack Eichel is now back uh, healthy. He is back on the team as well, so he is uh, activated. Um, I would like to see if Chandler Stevenson moves over to the left wing side or if he gets bumped mm, down to the second I line. It. I do like the way Amadio has been playing, though. Me he too. has nine, nine of his 11 points have been in the last like six or seven games. He's been on fire Four recently. None, nonetheless, Jack Eichel will be back centering that top line for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And you like go. you said, I think you would get a ton of return for a guy like Chandler Stevenson 
if, yeah. especially if you need some help on the blue line or you need a goalie right now as goalies have been struggling all season stevenson would be a great bargaining chip in any single trade hey before we get to the rest of the fade list the guys you want to sell high on now before they have bad second halves that we're predicting this is a hard one to predict steel it's a lot easier to come on here and say i think this really good player is going to have a good second half these might be some unpopular opinions. If you're not feeling it, let us know. Drop us a comment. Let us know who you're feeling to fade in the second half. If you like the takes or not, we need to know. <laughs> I got a couple more players here, Steel. We're going to get to big-time bets. But you know we got to talk about our friends at betonline.net. Today's yes, episode sir. is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this season and every season. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to the end of the bowl season to NBA hoops. They have it all for you at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts just like you like the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, you can find even more of those at BetOnline as well, where they're always the fastest and easiest way for you to get all of your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. For your next listen, though, please go check out Locked On NHL Prospects, your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading all the way up to the NHL draft this offseason. Plus, NHL draft rankings and top prospect comparisons for every single of your favorite NHL teams, Locked On NHL Prospects, available on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Make sure you go hit the subscribe and the follow button. Let's keep the ball rolling here. We're seeing some great things yep. from all of our listeners out there. So thank you so much for all the love and support. Let's continue on the topic. We did this episode yesterday of players who would have a little bit of a resurgence, a successful second half of the season. Now we're currently talking about players who might fall off a little bit in the second half of the season, uh, starting in the new year, 2023 and flip. This is, this is where you might start to hate me a little bit. I'm on uh, here. Let's last, go. These, these last two players that I have listed were two guys, two young guys that oh. you were very high on. Uh, oh no. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> waiting for this. I was uh, waiting. Our, yeah. Yeah. I knew you were waiting for this. Anyway, I'm going to start off with this guy, Cole Caulfield, Montreal Canadians rostered at 91%. Oh. Uh, oh. Now I want to get one thing straight. Whoa. I am not saying by any means trade this player. I'm not saying that by any means, but okay. we can see a little bit of a regression for Cole Caulfield and the Montreal Canadians in the second half of this season. I think you're right, though. You hit it on the nail. He will be a 40-goal scorer, but he's not going to get more than 55 points. He's not going to get more than 60 points this season. He is a goal scorer, and that's really all he is able to do. A couple of assists now and again, but the goal scoring ability is what he's known for. Again, I don't see him getting past 60 points by the end of the season. The Montreal Canadiens are horrific. They have the worst power play percentage in the NHL right now at the under not even at, under 15% right <sighs> now. Worst in the NHL, Caulfield, Caulfield only has seven special team points, which is not good enough. Again, the power play has been struggling. The penalty kill has been struggling. The great thing about him is he shoots a ton of pucks. So his shooting percentage is always going to continue to grow and be a, you know around 15 to 17%, which I believe it's at right now. Yep. He also has zero penalty minutes on the season. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't block shots. He doesn't hit people. So those peripheral stats you're not going to get from a guy like Cole Caulfield. You're really just getting the goals uh, from Cole Caulfield and the shots. He doesn't do a ton of other things right now for your fantasy team. Nonetheless, a young guy who is going to develop and grow for many many years. I'm not saying again. I'm not saying by any means trade this player. I'm just saying we're going to see a little bit of a down season in the second half. You're saying some contradictory things here, my co-host, my friend, my brother Steele, because the reason you have Cole Caulfield on your team is not for any of those peripheral stats. So you're getting him to do what he does, and he's doing it well so far on a team that is exactly what you said. They're whore awful right now. Horrible and awful <laughs> together. Shout out to Shaq, Big Diesel. 22 goals so far this season, though, is a good, really good season for a player yeah. who, like you said, is still developing. I don't hate the take, though, that he might drop off. 22 goals so far in 38 games, considering how bad the Montreal Canadiens are it's overall. Really good. 
is probably overachieving. So I'm here for the fact that can he put up 25 goals in the second half of the season? That's probably a tall ask to have. But I'll say this. That has nothing to do with this kid's ability. So thank you for saying don't give up on him because the second this team starts to right the ship even a little bit, this kid will continue to fire the puck in the back of the net. He's elite from the angles. He gets those shots in from either side of the hash marks there, and he can fire the biscuit. But I'm back to another demon. Some players that just came way too hot out the gate steal. People are starting <laughs> to talk about Hampus Lindholm as a guy who can get it done offensively. 27 points so far this season. Listen, this is a player who previously topped out in a full 82-game season at 31 points. I've been seeing trades for Hampus Lindholm. Oh, take Hampus Lindholm as an add-in. Guys, disclaimer right now, if you have Hampus Lindholm, sell him if you can. He might finish the season with three more points, and it wouldn't even be a bad year for him. It would still break his career high. That's how hot he started. He's not an offensive guy. He's a steady stay-at-home demon who can chip in sometimes. You're going to sell high on this player. I'm seeing him throwing out there, stealing way too much value. Listen to your boys flip and steal. Hampus Lindholm is going to have a sleepy, snoozy. He is going to put you to sleep in the second <laughs> half. How quiet he's going to be. You better be fading Hampus Lindholm. Four goals, 23 assists so far this season. Good year. Chipping in with shots, 81. Previous high in shots in his career steal. Hold me down for a second here. Holy crap, he only shot 150. <laughs> No, that's not even right. It's way lower. Fade Hampus Lindholm right now before I get even more heated. Probably could have done so even the week before Charlie McAvoy was making his return from the Boston Bruins. But yeah, definitely one of those defensemen you should have sold high on a little bit ago, but nonetheless probably should trade high right now. Thank you. Flip, you might you, 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 you might hate me a little bit more with this okay. take. Uh, I know who's coming. Not, I know. The, I, the listeners might not like me a little bit either, so let me hear it in the comments. DM us on Twitter, but nonetheless, Elias Pedersen, Vancouver Canucks. Oh, my God. Rostered at 98%. Alongside with Cole Caulfield, I'm not by any means saying trade him right now or ever unless you get some ridiculous offer handed towards you. I believe he finishes the season with 70 to 75 points. I know you expected him to finish with a little bit higher. I think he's going to regress the second half of the season. I think there's just too much news up in the air with this Vancouver Canucks team. You know, fair point. Bo Horvath, you know, the rumor, uh, not even rumor at this point. It looks like Bo Horvat and yeah. Brock Besser will be shipped out before the trade deadline. Yeah. Um, I'm here for it. I'm, here for I'm not sure how that will affect his game as yeah. it's pretty much just him up there. Um, even right now with all the drama with JT Miller, you know, we're not allowed yes. to swear on this podcast, but it turns out that he's a little bit of a locker room dough head, if you know Ooh, what I mean. So I like it. There's some rumors family coming friendly. out with it's JT. It's a family Miller. show. Family friendly, family friendly show. So we can't swear, but he's, it seems that's the, that's what I've been hearing on the social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, yeah. that he's a little bit of a locker room dough head and people are kind of getting sick of his, uh, attitude right now that he's the superstar and he, you know, he's all high and mighty. There's just so much going on with this Vancouver Canucks team. It's true. I love, I, look, this was one of those guys in the preseason that I was worried, not worried about, but I wasn't sure that he was going to develop as much as other people thought, such as yourself. I still think 70 to 75 points is where he's going to land at the end of the season. But again, I just think there's so much going on with the Vancouver Canucks. So much people probably getting traded off the team before the trade deadline, which is going to hinder his offensive production. 75 points for a 24-year-old player who is still getting there would be pretty solid. But yeah. I'm here for this take on the Vancouver Canucks because I'll get to my Vancouver Canuck player in a second who has just played so good in the first half that I just don't see it in the second half. <laughs> and a lot of that has to do with the reasons that you just mentioned. This Vancouver Canucks team is in flux right now. And when yeah. you have, let me just get to it, when you have a player that's so important to the team in Bo Horvat and the good season he's having and he's getting shopped, there's something up. There's something going on in the water right now in Vancouver and it doesn't smell right. Do I fully agree with your Pedersen take? Not 100%, but Bo Horvat is on my list to fade in the second half. Look, this guy is two goals away from tying his career high, and we're about to hit the halfway point. Yes, I understand. He has been doing it all. Penalty kill, power play, both ends of the ice, leading the team on and off the ice. 
there's just no way you get any higher value for Bo Horvat than you do right now. That's what I'm trying to tell you people. If you have a surplus at center or a surplus at forward or a surplus with your scoring, move a guy like Horvat who another GM looks at you moving Horvat with all those goals. You're going to get a good piece in return. That's what the point of today's episode is people. So I'm here for this steal. The Vancouver Canucks might be a mess down the second half. Demko might come back. He might be good. He might be awful. Who knows, but Bohr Horvat, that's another sell high. We got, I got one more guy. Do you want me to ream it off now, or should we do it right after the break? Yeah, ream it off right now before we get to big-time bets. Then we're getting a big-time bets deal, <laughs> and we're going to go back on this money train. This is the one where I know you're not going to like my take, because 13 goals, 40 assists to lead the NHL and defenseman this year, Eric Carlson. Hats off to Eric Carlson for bouncing back and having realistically one of the best seasons yeah. of his career. And if you look back at the numbers, it might be right there alongside his Norris winning season. This guy is one again. How much value are you going to get for Eric Carlson right now? And there ain't no way my man's putting up 40 assists in the second half. I'm not taking <laughs> anything away from how good he has been. And I understand people are going to be like flip. He's on like an impressive. What's he got? How many points has he got here? Steel. 11 points in his last five games like he's on fire so maybe this is the unpopular take of my crew (laughs) but i'm here for it because eric carlson ain't no way he's gonna keep this up and if you need a good piece up front like i keep saying vice versa whatever you want to call it eric carlson's gonna get you a big time piece up front if you need it eric carlson was actually one of those guys i had on my honorable mentions look he was in the top five for me as one of the best fantasy players or best players so far this uh this season uh, for good reason, though. He's been phenomenal. Again, he's been so dominant this first half that you know he's not going to be at the same rate in the second half. So, yeah. again, I, I like the take, but he's still probably the best defenseman so far this year, and that's saying something True. because he's on the San Jose Sharks, but you can't do anything about that. But with your Bo Horvat trade or a talk, I actually did not, – not in the fantasy league that you and I are in, but in a different one I'm in, I just saw a trade go down. Bo Horvat for – Tom Wilson and Nick Suzuki. What do you think about that? Ooh, I think that's a very fair trade, especially if Tom Wilson comes back to an already hot yeah. Washington Capitals team that there's something in their eye right now. And it has everything to do with number eight. That is a team that's been there before as well. Steel. They have some major injuries to make. John Carlson is out and they're still getting it yeah. done. He comes back. Wilson comes back. That could be a huge deal. I like it both ways for now though. Yeah, definitely something. So if you're looking to trade Bo Horvat, you're looking around Tom there Wilson, Nick Suzuki angle right go. now because Bo Horvat is scoring a ton of goals. We're going to get to big time bets very, very soon. But this episode is also brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious, healthy treat, then you need to try Built Bar right now. If you're like me and you want to eat healthier in the new year, but don't want to compromise the taste and healthiness, I've got the thing just for you you got to go and try Bill. With Bill, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're delicious. You won't think they're good enough for you, but they're actually the perfect for your new, year, new Year's resolution. And what makes Bill Bar so good? Well, for starters, like I say, and Flip says, every time they're covered in 100% chocolate, uh. so you still get that deliciousness with every single bite. And yes, real chocolate for that matter. And they come with unbelievably great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie and coconut almond and now you don't even have to wait to order them online you can go to walmart or sam's club right now your retail stores to pick them up you don't have to order them on built.com you still can but now you can still pick them up at retail uh retail shops like walmart and sam's club that's right head to your nearest walmart today walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of built bars Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Thank you so much. Hit, please hit the subscribe. Hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love and all the support. Thank you so much. Happy New Year again, 2023. Big things are happening on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Flip, we're running a little tight on time right now, but let's ream off these big-time bets where the money is made. And yes. I'll throw it off to you because you've been starting the new year off with the right selections. I appreciate that. I'll go with two right away. You can fire all three of yours, and it'll finish with my lock as well. We'll keep it short and sweet, Steel. Colorado Avalanche at the Vancouver Canucks. When I take a look at this game, I say it every time we talk about bets, an over or an under jumps out at me. 
you're going to say flip. If you look at the Colorado Avalanche, they've been playing some pretty good defensive hockey over their last 13 games. 10 of them have gone under the number, but a couple of those recently have gone very much over the number. And when you're taking yeah. a look at these two teams, recency, five of the last six between these two have gone well over the number. And that's all I need to see. I think this is an easy five, two, five, three situation. Well over the number. That's pick number one. Avs Vancouver over six and a half. Let me shift over very quickly to my boy, number 34, Austin Matthews. I said, Bang. keep your eye on 34. He hasn't gone on a special goal heater yet this season. It felt like he was going to do it after that good performance against Colorado. The way he corralled that puck the other night on the wing yeah. and shelved it over Bennington, I'm going to say it right now. There's not another player in the NHL who can do it like Matthews when it comes to that release. And now he's starting to feel it. Watch number 34 go. Give me the anytime Austin Matthews goal against the Seattle Kraken. That's not my lock of the night, though, Steel, but it almost was because that's how much I'm feeling another big night from 34. That shot was absolutely ridiculous. Off his back yeah. foot, too. Yeah. Barely just corralled Wobbling it. puck. Oh, corralled it. Beautiful. Beauty. Absolute beautiful goal from Austin Matthews. I might have to dabble and, you know, sprinkle some money on Austin Thank Matthews you. anytime goal. First pick of the night for myself. I'm looking at the Blue Jackets Capitals over six and a half goals at plus 109 right now. The last yeah. three games for the Capitals have gone over the number. But actually, the last three games for the Blue Jackets have gone under the number. Oh. Doesn't matter. The Blue Jackets are one of the worst teams in the league right now. And like you said, with that avalanche Vancouver Canucks game, I could see a 5-2, 5-3 Capitals win over the number. Like Hit it. that right now for your first selection. My second pick, I'm taking the Islanders on the money line at plus 138 against these Edmonton Oilers. I don't trust, again, I don't trust Stuart Skinner or Jack okay. Campbell right now. Connor McDavid can do everything himself if yeah. he wants to. But this Islanders, Islanders team is legit. Great defensively, great goaltender in Elias Sororkin. They're getting a ton of goals now from Matthew Barzell, Anders Lee, Brock Nelson as well. I like yeah. Islanders on the money line. And for my lock of the night, I'm going with the hot hand right now. LA Kings on the money line at so home, hot. plus 140 against these Boston Bruins. 7-2-1 in, the, in the last 10 games for the LA Kings. And you said it yourself uh, off air just 20 minutes ago. Wouldn't it be nice to see these Bruins start losing a couple of games and they're going to start be. against these Kings right now. Love that's it. my lock of the night. Wow. That's a spicy lock of the night. Some <laughs> of these picks are spicy tonight, Steel. Unfortunately for all the listeners out there, we ran a little long in the two. So the breakdown on these bets is a little slim. Check the Twitter for all the latest of the breakdowns and odds. Steel. New York Rangers roll into the Montreal Canadiens barn. This Montreal Canadiens team, you mentioned it a little earlier on today's episode. Oh my goodness, they're bad right now. And sometimes yeah. when you see a streak this bad, you go, okay, they're going <laughs> to snap out of it. I'm looking at this like this is about to get worse before it gets yeah. better. That's how it feels to me. And, you know, sue me if I'm wrong. I'm going to take the New York Rangers who are 10 and three in their last 13 games and playing the best hockey of the season so far over the last few weeks. Yes. They've had a couple of blips on the radar. They're going to smoke the Montreal Canadians tonight. Look, the Habs have given up 22 goals in the last three games. And the New York <laughs> Rangers are just starting to round into form a little bit here. Yes. They have a very good spot here. They're going to steamroll the Montreal Canadiens. Give me the Rangers on the money line. I'm not going puck line. I'm going money line for the lock of the night. This just feels like easy money. The Habs are straight up doo-doo right now. Yeah, bad team. And a huge win for the New York Rangers the other day against the top team in the Metropolitan Division, Bang. Carolina Hurricanes. A tough game for Kachekov. Again, I don't blame him whatsoever. Just a ton of unlucky bounces from 15-plus feet outside from him. So, again, big win for the New York Rangers. I like the selection there. Keeping it safe on the money line. Look, the Montreal Canadiens can put up a fight every once in a while. So, I like the fact that you're going on the money line. Appreciate that. Rangers do struggle a little bit with scoring. So who knows with this game, but I like the Rangers on the money line. I'm definitely going to add that in a parlay for myself. Boom. Thank you. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, for your second listen, please go check out Locked On NHL Prospects, your daily podcast covering the next generation of superstars in the NHL leading up to the NHL draft. 
and top NHL draft rankings and prospect comparisons for every single team. Make sure you go follow, hit the subscribe. We appreciate all the love and support. Thank you again for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow.